bit about themselves. So let's start with, you know, our earliest adopter who was here first, you know, Tim uh, from AAEE. Tim, can you give us a little bit of, you know, who you are, what you do, and what you use the platform for? Sure. Thank you. Um, so my name is Tim Newbert. I'm the executive director for the American Association for Employment and Education. Uh, I work here and, and live and work in Sycamore, Illinois, about an hour west of Chicago. Um, my organization is um, involved with pre-K through 12 teacher preparation, employment and retention. And our members are school districts and universities and colleges and, and others involved with those, those areas. Uh, so the reason that, you know, so what we use uh, Premier Virtual for um, is we conduct um, nationwide and, and on occasion regional job fairs for teachers. And so um, we had we had dabbled in, in virtual job fairs in the past, but uh, about a year ago, um, for obvious reasons, we uh, took to exploring more closely uh, virtual job fairs uh, as a solution. For our, uh, to a way to bring our educator candidates together with school system recruiters. And so uh, we have now conducted, I don't know, four events, I think, uh, on, over the last year with Premier Virtual with intentions to run uh, three more in the next three months um, or four months. So uh, very excited to, uh, to be an early adopter and to work closely with, uh, with Premier Virtual and with, with you, Steve. All right. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. Next up, Dana. Uh, you know, Dana, uh, again, give us a little bit about yourself. And, you know, I, I just want to say as well, Dana, is, you know, Dana has been here. We've, we're, but Dana's organization really says virtual is the future. Can you talk just a little bit about yourself and, and how you plan on moving forward with it as well, Dana? Yeah, so hi, my name is Dana Morrison. I am the recruitment manager for the second largest school system in Louisiana. Uh, I also have been an educator for 34 years and a, a social studies teacher for a long time. Um, I was asked to come do this role uh, about three and a half years ago. And um, I guess about um, a year before the um, lockdown came, I had already started looking into um, online virtual recruitment because um, I felt like things needed to change. And then it's been about a year ago, the lockdown came and we were like, wow, what are we gonna do? And um, we uh, started investigating like different platforms and Premiere came um, straight away. And I remember sitting in my living room talking to Steve and being like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? This is like crazy. And um, here it is a year later, we have had um, such success with Premier. Um, we have had more candidates visit our job fairs in this past year than the whole three years that I've been in this um, position. Um, and I, and I want to give just a really big shout out to Steve and his team because when the lockdown came, you know, I, I'm in my mid fifties and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is so complicated. And I remember um, Gary in particular and Steve both just spending so much time helping me to navigate the system and learn how to do it. And here we are a whole year later and they still are fantastic. So not only is their platform wonderful to use and easy to use, but their uh, customer service, you know, with Jordan now is just, I, I can never tell y'all thank you enough for what you've done for our school system and just the, uh, and we use ours also, just a couple other things really quick. We use ours for substitute roundup now for our substitutes. We use it for a platform to reach out to candidates who want to become a teacher with our alt cert providers. Uh, and we also have used it even with our university students to connect with them as well. So it's been a really powerful tool for us. And Tim, I'll be at your fair tomorrow as well. So I'll get to see 2.0 in action, I hope. So um, anyway, Steve and his team are phenomenal. Well, thank you, Dan. Not quite yet for 2.0, but we always appreciate it. It's, it's coming. It's, it's there. Okay. So, as soon as uh, it comes. Yes, yes. Uh, and then uh, Sharon. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharon Nelson. I am the head of talent acquisition for Richland School District 2. It's in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, we have been using um, Premier Virtual since uh, January of this year, but I will tell you we have had 
probably five to six, seven events so far this year. And I think that it has been incredibly beneficial for us because, you know, over time there have been, you know, a decrease in the amount of educators who would come to career fairs. But with the major career fair that we put on in January, it was the highest attended in the past two years um, through the pandemic. And I was able to be able to reach out and speak to candidates all across the United States. So I think that it already, you know, is, is yielding tangible dividends for us here at the district. Um, we also used a platform for um, our classified screenings. And my responsibility is to make sure that we are um, hiring and retaining the talent for both classified and certified um, um, district employees. So using it for that way, and we've also just started using it for um, onboarding uh, opportunities with our substitutes so that they have the opportunity to come in, look around at our different school booths, and then click on to a um, an out, outlier Zoom link so they can have more of that interactive conversation with other candidates who are just signed on as substitutes. So, and if I can just um, say that, you know, it's only March and I have um, had the platform to our use in, since January, but Jason and Glenn, have been incredibly, incredibly helpful to us. Not only, you know, for our first event where I had no idea what I was doing with the platform, Glenn was able to come in and ease my mind and then coming back after that to go over, you know, the data, you know, which is incredibly important. And so just an added element of the customer service with the ease of the platform for our school administrators, I say we are thoroughly, uh, thoroughly satisfied with um, the partnership that we have with Premier Virtual. All right, thank you, Sharon, for those kind of words. Uh, Carolyn. Hey, I'm Carolyn Cavanaugh, and I am the Magnet Cooperative Learning Coach in Lexington Richland School District 5, also in Columbia, South Carolina. And I kind of happened into this role due to COVID. I was not able to be in the classrooms with my teachers and in my schools. And in the Magnet office, we were looking for ways to still reach our families and reach our different community members so that we could create a place that could substitute the in-person events that we normally had. So we actually have had 10 magnet events since November when we started. Um, Jason has been amazing to help us with that. And they were so successful that our HR team reached out and we just hosted in February um, our first virtual teacher recruitment fair, which was also a great success. And so this platform has been amazing to help us continue to communicate and just reach out and provide information uh, we have been able to use it in a little bit of a different way, um, so that's not always a, a job situation, but also information seeking, um, and it's just been really great, so we're very thankful for this. Perfect. Well, thank you, Karen, for that, too. I, I could end the webinar right now. You guys answered all my questions uh, with everything, just kind of, uh, of what you did, but uh, you know, let's, um, you know, thank you again. You know, my name is Steve Edwards. Um, for, for those that just joined, CEO of Premier Virtual, we have a wonderful um, panelist group today. Uh, but also, and, and I think that, you know, Dana, I know knows this, Tim may know this, but, you know, education is, is uh, near and dear to me. As my wife was a teacher for 10 years uh, before we had our first child. Um, and then she left the classroom, but now she works for the University of Florida Atlantic University down here, uh, and she mentors new teachers. So it's a program that the college has. So uh, every, uh, every semester she has a new person that instead of going to the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, student teaching, they get their classroom. So she goes in there and she gets to mentor new teachers. So she loves it. She says, you know, I don't have to, I don't have a classroom anymore, but I still get to mentor this. So every semester, and it's great, you know, and she's, you know, really gets to help with that. So we're great. Now, I think everybody got thrown into that virtual world. So now she's back into the, the virtual world of teaching and stuff like that, where it's really, you know, changed the life. So we, I love it to be able to, you know, have this and be able to help other people um, really be able to get into that education field. So, you know, I'm going to, I want to throw this kind of out to the group uh, first kind of is here is, you know, when COVID hit, were you scared when you first had to make that decision to go virtual and did you did it take a while um did you kind of do some research but how did that change your your thought period you know your thought process of oh my gosh are we going to do this or you know what's going to happen so let's start with carolyn let's let's go i'm going to go backwards this time so um, we at the 
beginning of our school year, everybody was very much up in the air what was going to happen. Um, but part of our federal magnet grant is we do have to have these events. And so we knew we were going to need to find something. And so we did shop around. We looked at quite a few different platforms and we actually met with Jason and he just led us through. He answered all of our questions and we knew that this was going to be the best company for us. And so he's been so patient, especially as we use this platform in a little bit of a different way. It wasn't job seeking at the beginning. And so we knew that we were going to be able to have someone that was going to work with us that was not going to think any question was a stupid question and would help us kind of be calm when we were going through those moments of, okay, we're about to launch our first big event. And we actually ended up with more than twice as many people attending our very first virtual event than we had in person. So we got great feedback and we just knew this was the path we were going to go down. And as far as safety was obviously the safest option, but also it really turned out to be more effective and productive in a lot of ways too. Okay, so I'm gonna actually go right off of that question from here. Now, post COVID, um, and nobody knows, I get asked that question a lot, you know, from, from, from the businesses stuff like this, but post COVID, do you see yourself continuing to use virtual? I think that we could, we've talked about it. We did um, get the year long subscription. So we are still using um, our membership and looking at different ways and opportunities to reach out to our families. But a lot of our feedback that we got from surveys, not just our job candidates, we also had people from across the country, but even our community families saying, it's much easier to attend an event virtually than it is to come in person. And when they're dealing with dinner and kids and you know extracurriculars, all these things, they can pop in, get the information they need, ask some questions, feel connected, but it doesn't take that same time commitment. And so for us, we would love to be able to continue to offer options even. Um, and then also once you host that event, you can go back into those booths for as long as they're active. So that information is still available. So even if you miss it, you really didn't miss the whole event. So we would definitely continue to use this in the future. Perfect, thank you. And Sharon, what about you? Getting go, Moving from the in-person to the virtual world, Scary, not scary. Take us through your process. Well, you know, for me, it was a little bit different because my predecessor retired in the middle of at the end of last school year. So it just kind of left me in it as a one woman show. So I, 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 I would be remiss if I say I wasn't a little bit, you know, on edge as to see how this was going to work out. However, you know, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of research on a lot of different platforms. Um, we wanted to make sure that whatever platform that we went with was effective, not only for, you know, the attendees, but for that of our administrators as well. I needed it to be an easy process for them with all that they were um, using, excuse me, um, attending to on a daily basis. So um, this platform ended up being the best one for us to use. And, you know, and as we were going into the new school year, you know, I had the wherewithal to say, you know, even if things did you know, ease up and even if there was an opportunity for us to go back to in-person events, we have to understand that now there is an element where everything is, there are people who are looking for online options, you know, a, a virtual option and, and how to connect. And, you know, what if my child is sick, but I really want to go to this event and I can't, I have to make a decision. So I believe that we will use um, the platform going forward for a variety of different events. Um, I know that's one of our our magnet team, they are using the platform as well, much like Carolyn was made mention. And so it's only going to continue to grow. Um, we're now using it for info sessions, you know, and sending out, you know, really vibrant, you know, social media, uh, you know, colorings and things like that to encourage people to come on and, and register. So it has been incredibly, you know, easy. It's easier than I thought it would be, quite honestly. And I'm really satisfied with it. That's, that's good to hear. And I think what you know you're talking about, and you're going to start hearing it a lot more. Even we're talking about it now, is the hybrid events yeah. where you can have it, and you know, Carolyn kind of touched on it as well as you know, dinner and stuff like that at home. Kids, maybe they can't leave to go do something, but you can have that option. Do you want to log in online or do you want to go in person? And that's not even talking about right. Some people that are not going to want to leave the house, right? With COVID there, even after vaccines or anything that's out there, they're still going to have their gloves and everything on and, and they don't want to, they want to do everything online. And you're, we're really starting to see. And 
um, you know, I think you all kind of touched on it, the data. Um, the data that we've seen from, you know, the clients is more people are logging in to virtual, even if it's a shorter period of time, because they can log in, they see what they need to see, and then they can, they can go from there. So, all right, next up, Dana. Uh, I know you kind of touched on how you kind of got in. We're a little, little nervous about it, but um, give us your thoughts on, you know, that, that, that move into the virtual world and then the future after. Um, so um, I, I think the big thing was I had already, um, hang on, hang on one second. Hey, so sorry, I had some people in my office. Um, so I, I think the thing was for me um, is that, like I said before, um, we had already done a couple virtual job fairs back way before, but it was still very um, new. And so I had wanted to do virtual for a while. And then when it happened and I was in charge, just like Sharon, I'm a one person in, in a midst of 80 schools with 160 principals. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in charge of everything. How am I gonna do that? And um, I was super nervous about it. Um, I remember our first fair, I must have called Steve and Gary like so many times, like, oh my gosh, is this really gonna work? Are people really gonna be able to get on? And um, we ended up having um, almost 700 people at our first fair and it was huge. And the principals loved it. I think it makes things very accessible because our uh, parish, our district, um, is very, very spread out. So for people to get here on time to one location and, and mastermind all that was very difficult. It was a lot of money involved. I think that um, the virtual platform has been very kind to our budget. Um, in the sense that we're able to get a lot of people in from a lot of different places that we wouldn't have normally been able to do in our, our local fairs. Even though it's it's local, we still have the ability to attract anybody who's moving here. Um, post COVID, I think just like with education, we've seen a paradigm shift. We've seen an opportunity for us to do amazing things in the field of education and what that's gonna look like. We're not really sure yet because the data is not really in yet, but it's starting to trickle in. I think we have um, the possibility to be part of a really powerful movement. So I don't see just like, I don't see the blackboard coming back anytime soon. Um, and we were, I was talking to a young lady yesterday Yesterday, um, and she's a student teacher and she was saying she remembers when she was in middle school doing a walkathon to get smart boards. We're not going to do smart boards anymore either. We're going to have a culmination of all kinds of things. So I think that virtual is here to stay and what we do with it can only go up from now. So that that's my thoughts about that. Absolutely. I, I mean, Dean, I was hoping you were going to say it's long term since uh, East Baton Rouge. I just signed a with contract. It. That's right. <laughs> You'll be yes. with us for four years. So we, yes. we love having you. So yes. you, you see the future of it. You know, and, and before Tim goes next is, you know, also, uh, you know, what Tim is doing also for his AAEE members is Tim is, uh, we put together a really good deal. So with Tim, if somebody's involved with AAEE, they also get a discount on the platform. So being part of that as well really helps everything. So with everybody that's on this call that's seen that, you know, uh, their prices are a lot less than what our normal is not being so part thank of. you tim and steve make sure i get a little bit of a refund then but you already you already got it so you're good <laughs> okay so, just yeah. checking yep you got it even yep everything that's what we set up with tim so tim if you want to uh talk a little bit about i know you did some events before on other platforms that were out there and, and gave us a shot uh which was you know which was uh went from there to now where we're at today um, so it was, wasn't as scary for you per se, but, you know, moving from, let's say one platform that you were used to, to another, to where we're at, can you give us kind of the rundown of that? Yeah, well, um, so last spring we were actually scheduled to do a live event, um, which, you know, for us, you know, we, we have two employees, uh, we're both in Illinois and we were going to do a live event, uh, out by, out in Pennsylvania, um, if you can believe that. So, um, we, but we're used to doing things virtually. So, um, you know, again, we've had experience with another platform. Um, when, when it became clear that, that this pandemic wasn't going to be gone anytime soon, we, you know, we canceled our, our event in Pennsylvania and looked to do something virtual. 
Uh, our experience with the other platform hadn't been particularly strong. Um, so I lo looked around at different uh, options and uh, was really impressed with Premier Virtual. And, uh, and it seemed like an opportunity that, and it's proven out, Steve, that, you know, you, you're, you were moving, um, you, you were interested in moving into the K-12 space and serving that, that industry. And your product was growing, your platform was growing, your team was growing. Uh, and so it looked like a great opportunity for us to be, you know, on the ground level or near the ground level with, with you and your team and, and your platform and, uh, and, and be able to have a voice. And that's not always something you see. I'm, I'm actually served as a product manager in another life for a tech company. And, and so I, I can appreciate the importance of having a, a, a voice as a customer and how that's not always the case. Uh, and so I really appreciate that opportunity. So, you know, as far as the, the, the future goes, um, you know, I do think that the virtual events are here to stay. Uh, I will say that in the, in the, in the teacher and the pre-K through 12 uh, employment space, um, the, the reality is that currently most teachers, you know, like to stick, stick by home or where they went to school uh, in terms of, of where they take teaching positions. But um, as a former human resources, uh, K-12 uh, human resources director myself, uh, and, and just somebody who's, what, you know, kept up, with obviously watching the field closely in my current role, uh, I really want to push teacher candidates to, to look more broadly and at least explore alternatives. And so getting, getting candidates to even, you know, consider those options, it's very difficult in an in-person environment when you, if you're insisting that they go, no offense to Dana, but you know, insisting that an Illinois candidate go down to Baton Rouge or, or go down to North Carolina or go out to, you know, go to Alaska, right? And then there are opportunities all over this country and, and quite honestly, international opportunities as well. And so a virtual environment, a virtual job fair brings, brings those candidates and those recruiters together from all over the, all over the world, quite honestly. Um, and it's a great opportunity for, for candidates to learn about uh, districts and other employers that they're not they're not as familiar with, and for those employers to give them, you know, to highlight what makes them special and why a candidate might want to consider a relocation. Absolutely, thank you, Tim. And and you know that really opens up kind of uh, you know my next question is with the virtual worlds, it opens up everything to to anywhere. Um, you know, Sharon, Carolyn, I'm going to throw this at you guys first is, have you noticed getting people outside of the South Carolina area um, attending your virtual events? I know, Carolyn, yours is more on the magnet side, so I guess I'll throw this more to Sharon. Uh, this question, have you noticed more getting candidates outside of the normal recruiting area? Oh, absolutely. Um, I will tell you that, you know, Columbia is, we have, uh, we're, we're a military base. We have a military base here, right there, uh, Fort Jackson. So there's a lot of transient um, teachers coming in and students coming in. So if there's educators who are, who know their PCSing here, they'll go ahead and take a look at all the districts in the area and have the opportunity to, to, re to interview and kind of get a a bird's eye view of all the districts and the schools and the opportunities. So it really has opened up, you know, a wide, wider net of, um, of, of teachers, actually educators who we can interview and they can actually have the opportunity to secure employment before even, you know, having to take that journey to move here. So it has been incredibly helpful, especially for our, our military families. Absolutely. So we, I was never in Fort Jackson, but I was in uh, North South Carolina. I was in Fort Bragg. So like we went through Columbia quite a bit and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it is that transient area. So, you know, um, Dana, what about you? Are you seeing people from outside of the Louisiana area? Um, yeah. So one of the things that we've seen that's been really good is that um, we have, because we are, um, have several big universities near us. We have people that want to move here and it's opened up for us to be able to interview with them and connect them through to principals and schools prior to them moving. So let's say that we have someone who's working on a PhD who's moving down here with their husband or wife. This has made it really accessible for them to meet us and to find out about our opportunities without having to pay all the money to fly down here and come. So that's been a really good thing. Perfect. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, sorry, Carolyn, you had mentioned your magnet events that you're doing. Is Can you describe, um, since it's it, in, in all of you are using it for di some different aspects outside, so I'm going to kind of throw this to everybody as well. But, you know, Carolyn, can you describe how you're using uh, this platform exactly? So the beginning research was looking at replacing kind of the in-person magnet fair. And so each school that we have a magnet school or program has their own booth. And so we were looking for something that would provide us the opportunity for a family, either perspective or teachers or whoever to come and see these different places in a way that would showcase all the great things they're doing. And so what we've done in the past with that is every school has had a booth and they were manned by different teachers, principals. Some of them even had students um, there to talk to families. And we, our first one actually happened before the live video chat feature. So we loved that when that got added. Um, and then subsequent events for our schools, actually, they normally would have a family night or an open house kind of opportunity for families to come see more specifically about that program or that school. And we actually ran all of those through this platform as well. And so we were able to register, capture that information. Then when we were going to market for elementary school events, we could go back through our magnet fair registration, pull those families and say, hey guys, we're having these events at these schools. If you want to learn more specifics about that program or that school, this would be a great opportunity for you. And some of them we did the same, I, I, somebody mentioned that having an external, we had, we used Google Meet, so they had those Meet links where they could go and talk face-to-face. -face. The in-platform video feature is amazing. Um, but so the booth, basically, we just didn't have a job vacancy listed. And so everything else we utilized, that top link, all of the accessible links, the bio, all of those things were a great way for us to showcase information, give resources, even include pictures so they could kind of get an idea of what we were talking about. Uh, so those were the way that we really got that success that really hooked our HR team in to want to use this for the recruitment there. All right, so you use the solution and then I heard you say you downloaded the report. So you download yes. it so yes. that you can now retarget those, those people that were on the platform again. So that's, yes. that's great to hear. I love that because you're using it for right? Outside the box thinking. And, and, and that's where I think really with virtual is going is people are using it for, for so many different uh, things out there. Uh, we just had here in Palm Beach County, they did their career showcase. Um, so, or claim your future showcase. So they had military, they had colleges, they had some different um, uh, private companies that were there. So then all of the students logged in and some of them, they had it logged in through the classrooms. So they would log in, they had the teacher's classroom and they would go in. Uh, they would go in and they had a welcome video from the um, uh, Palm Beach County, the superintendent of Palm Beach County gave that. And then they were able to go into all these booths and they would see that. So they did just like you did. They, they were able to use all the resources so that they could see different you know, videos, pictures, see the resources, see what these were out there. And it was, they had over 3,000 people logged in to Claim Your Future Showcase. They said they normally have between 1,000 and 1,500. It was the largest one they ever had because they usually bust them into the convention center here in Palm Beach County. So they have certain students that they come in and now they change that so that everybody could log in. So it's, it's thinking and saying, how else can I use this platform? And I love, you know, what you're doing and you're using not just the, the platform, but the reports, because that's so important to be able to then remarket, uh, you know, to them. Uh, great. Dana, you mentioned, and, and uh, Sharon, I'm going to have you talk too about this is because you both mentioned it, the substitute program. Uh, so Dana, can you talk a little bit about how you're using it for your substitute programs? Yeah, so when um, we, we've been back in face-to-face -face since October, um, but one of the areas that quickly came up that was deficient was in our substitute pool because most of our substitutes were retired teachers, older teachers, and they did not feel comfortable coming back into the classroom because of COVID. So we really had to do some, some changes. And as I said before, we have 80 schools. So um, we started using the platform. We started first on all, so we had a job fair um, like once a month. 
um, for a while. And then we started adding a booth on for our substitute director to meet and start getting um, our local universities and um, community colleges to join us uh, for substitute roundup. So we would share the opportunities and how you could um, pick which schools you wanted to go to and, and that kind of thing. Then when we started adding on some other fairs, we would add a substitute room on so they could actually start to because our our dilemma was that we were starting to reach more people but they were not completing their applications um, so they were saying they wanted to sub well saying you wanted to sub and actually being a you know background check ready to move into a classroom sub was a whole different thing so we started setting up recruit our people on um, the platform to make sure that the applications were being completed and, and starting moving them so that the onboarding process would be much quicker. And so we've been really, that's been a successful thing. So, um, so that's been really good to use the platform for many things just other than a virtual job fair. Perfect. You, you touched on one thing before I get to uh, Sharon, uh, background checks. If our platform eventually had a place where you could do a background check right through it, would that be something that you would like? Um, so I'd have to talk to, I mean, I, it sounds great, but of course, you know, I've learned with Daphne Donaldson, our HR director, who is, who is great at all things, I'd have to get her, uh, mm -hmm. her, you know, buy-in and would that be something would be feasible to do? So sounds fantastic. Um, so definitely check with Daphne and Tim may yeah. know that answer as well. And I know a lot of the, you know, a lot of the schools, they have theirs, but we're, you know, as we continue to evolve, I mean, we know what's about to happen in the next couple of weeks. And then from there, it's just continually evolving from the surveys to background checks and, and, and to really be that all in one uh, recruitment tool. So, cause we're, you know, our whole thing is, is the future. So that's going to be something in there. And I just asked. Um, I, well, I will tell you too, one of the things that we've done, this is something new as well. Um, we have our grow our own program for our high school students. We just got a grant. Um, I just received word that we were fully funded and it's called Connect to Teach. Um, and one of the things we really need to do virtually because most of our high school students, even though we're back face to face, they're still virtual. And so one of the things that we're going to do is use it to connect to our students about becoming a teacher. And that'll be a, so we're going to use the platform for that for our connect to teach program. All right, great. More, more, more opportunities. I like hearing that. Uh, Sharon, can you talk a little bit about your your substitute program of how you used it? Well, you know, we host um, classified or support staff um, screenings every month, and they actually have ramped up a little bit now to every um, every other week. And so we have these screenings specifically for our schools that have like higher vacancies than others. And so when we started having those screenings, we saw a great, you know, um, time to our time to fill really decreased because we were being very strategic and specific to where we were trying to place these um, quality candidates. So with that, you know, I said, why don't we just add substitutes? Because like Dana said, the substitute pool was getting, was, was almost very, was very shallow actually. And so with the platform, there's that function button that says you have to have an application completed. You know, is this necessary? Or should you have the application completed before registering? So we utilize that um, during our support or classified staff screenings. And so when our substitute teachers, um, excuse me, our substitute candidates, who are interested when they come on at their respective time, because we send them the time that they're going to be meeting with my substitute team. Um, when we send that information out, my team then, you know, is able to pull up their application to say, okay, well, you know, they're going through their respective screen and they're interviewing with the substitutes, but then say, well, okay, well, great. I now see that you have your application completed. Let's go through some things. Let's make sure your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted because once you are, once your application is completed, this is just going to ramp up and, and speed up actually make your onboarding more efficient. So it has actually streamlined our substitute process, taking that time to fill from a month down to about two weeks, including onboarding. Oh, great. And you do, um, I, I may be wrong on this, but uh, you do like some screening and you set up times too, also for yes. the principals and, and them to meet on uh, through the platform? 
I do. So, well, for our classified screenings, well, I'll actually send the email out, you know, to all of well, my team will send an email out to say, we're having our screening on March the 17th. Are you interested? And so we have all of the candidates reply back, yes, that they're interested. And from there, we put together a calendar, a schedule, if you will, to say, okay, you're going to be meeting with Sharon Nelson at this time. And then, you know, so everyone knows exactly when they come on, you come into this booth, you click on Sharon Nelson's booth at 10 o'clock. And when you, all you do is say hello, Sharon Nelson to click that button, that video button, and it is showtime. So it's a very efficient process, especially with our support staff, um, but also with that of our certified team as well. They appreciate that too, to know, okay, I have this interview set up at this time so that there isn't any interference, a candidate trying to come in at this time, or they're missing another candidate this time, but so that they know, okay, I need to keep this a succinct conversation, 15 minutes, because my you know, my 3.30 is coming in here in the next five seconds. Perfect, Lo love that. Um, and then Tim, is there anything else or, or, or anybody else that, I know somebody said onboarding and I don't remember, I, I wrote it down, but I don't remember that they're using it for onboarding as well. Is that kind of what you're talking about there, Sharon? So yes, yeah, so when I use, uh, when we use it for onboarding, um, it is the candidates will come in and uh, they will we'll ask them to come in. If the event starts at 2.30, the onboarding event starts at 2.30, um, from 2.30 to 2.40, that's when they're able to, br to browse around all the different schools. And then at 2.40, we ask them to click that top link, which would then take them out to um, a Google Meets or a Zoom where they're all able to come together and then have the respective orientation and then breakout groups where they have their you know, I-9s and so on and so, so forth, those types of conversations to get everything flowing um, before they actually hit their anticipated start date. All right, perfect. Thank you, Sharon. You know, Tim, uh, on your on your events, they're they're national events. Do you allow the students, or do you open it up uh, before the event so that, that the potential candidates can log in and see the companies, or do you say it opens at ten a.m. and you have it at ten a.m. So it's a great question, Steve. Thanks for putting me on the spot. No, um, we. We, we are aware of that option. We have not done that. And, and honestly, um, and I, I don't, I mean, I could throw any, any specific individuals under the bus here, but honestly, the reason we haven't is we usually have some, some booths that school districts haven't set up until the 11th hour. And um, it makes me uncomfortable to, to present, to you know, give candidates access to poking around booths if I think I've still got some booths that aren't, aren't ready to go. Okay. And, and I think that's kind of the, the majority out there. And I kind of had a feeling you were going to say that. So uh, <laughs> where, you know, a lot of things and I, uh, what we're doing within 2.0, we're creating automated reminders for you. So now you don't have to go in and set that. So think about it. And I know some of you are really going to love this for your organizations. They're going to get a reminder. 24 hours before the event as well, automatic reminder. You don't have to do anything. So they're going to get a 24 hour reminder to say, hey, the event's in 24 hours. So they can make sure they get it. They're also going to get a reminder 30 minutes before the event. And if they haven't logged in 10 minutes after the event starts, they're going to get an email that says the event started, you haven't logged in. So it's automatically going to be as long as there's somebody logged in, they're not. But we also have the, atten the attendees. So now all of your attendees or your candidates are going to get that 24 hour reminder. They're going to get a one hour reminder and then they're going to get the event is live. So that event live, they're going to get an email and a text message. So now they're going to be opting in for that as well. Um, so now they're going to get that reminder text. Then 30 minutes before the event is over, they're going to get, if somebody hasn't logged in, they're going to get an automated email to say you haven't logged into the event. So we are really trying to, we took it, you know, we went back and forth of, you know, you, uh, the organization setting it up and we said, we're going to take everything away from you. Not in a bad way, but we want to make it customized so that you don't have to do everything. So you can go in, you set up that event and it's going to be from the automated to the time they register and get the email to the time that they log in is going to be there. We take everything off your plate to really try to help that uh, login ratio for some companies that don't have great login ratios, we want to be able to help that, right? So, you know, Tim, you kind of you kind of mentioned this, and um, we've got a couple minutes left. So, you know, you said that you felt like you had a voice. Can you, um, to 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 all the people that are out there, 
what did that mean to you um, when you say, I felt like I had a voice with, with Premier Virtual? Oh, it, it meant it meant everything. I, I, I just, um, you know, school districts are a unique beast and uh, we like, we have our own language. And uh, so, you know, many, many technical and many platforms, software as a service platforms um, don't, uh, <laughs> are, are, are very corporate, right? And we've had that conversation, Steve. Uh, so I, I, I just felt like this was your company, you know, the fact that I was talking to the, to the founder and the owner of the company, the head of the company, um, that the platform, you know, you, you were very upfront about that it's, you know, it's a, it's, it will continue to evolve. Uh, that's what I love about software as a service, as, a, as an, an approach. And so I felt, you, you know, there, there are all sorts of signals that, um, that I was going to have some, have influence. And uh, so I've tried to take full advantage of that. Have um, we lived up to that? <laughs> That's the big question. Have you lived up to what your thoughts were? You pushed back a little bit, but but it's you know re, a reasonable amount. And I I mean I do again having you know putting on my product management hat. I, I certainly appreciate that you you can't be all things to all people, and you can't put all of your eggs in the in the you know K twelve basket. Um, but you you've done. You, I have not been displeased at all um, with with you know how how receptive you've been to my feedback and 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 also communicating and can keeping me uh aware of what's you know what your product roadmap is what your what your plans are for the future i think you're you know i mean you just did it here you know in this presentation where you're you're just you're very open about sharing what you know what you guys are thinking about what you're exploring and and not you know there's many organizations many companies that aren't aren't doing that for us Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. So we're almost out of time here. Does anybody else on the panelists want to say anything to the people that are listening uh, to this um, to this webinar? We'll start with you, Dana. Anything you want to say? Um, yeah, so I, I think what Tim said, just to um, go over it again, but it was just awesome working with Steve in the sense that I really watched this last year, watch his business explode. But even though his um, responsibilities and the things that he's over in his own family, how much he loves his own wife and kids, um, to know that what I think in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as an educator and as a recruiter matters to him, and he's never too busy um, to help. And I, I think that just speaks volumes. And I, I really can't um, really say enough about that. And then not just Steve, but his team. And uh, I know from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, looking for good teachers, I am hats off to you. I don't have a hat on, but uh, I'm very grateful to your company for what you've done for our school system and what you continue. And um, you do push back very little. I haven't seen that Tim as much because I'm just a small fish, but um, even though I'm a small fish, I know that I matter and that's really important. And so I'm very, um, indebted to your company um, in Baton Rouge and thank you for all your help. Well, thank you, Dan. And you know, we've grown, right? And that's where we now have the dedicated account managers. Cause like you said, like we've grown, you know, now we have a team of over 25 um, and as we grow, we're bringing on more support so that, that it's there because, you know, I, I have another poll that's going to come out when I'm going to do kind of a demo for people to stay on. But, you know, one of the things we talk about customer support, and, and I think we've heard that from every single one of the panelists that are on here is talked about our team. You know, you have from an account executive to the account manager that is dedicated for you, not even including the support team that we have in the back is because, you know what, we do this on a daily basis. We understand the ins and outs. You don't do it on a daily basis. So I want to make sure that our team is always there to be able to support you. If you ever feel that it's not, you all, you all know you have my phone number, right? And, and you can reach directly out to me um, so that my team is always there. You know, hopefully we never get to that, but, you know, we're still here to be able to support all of our, uh, all of our you know, clients and future clients. So Sharon, Carolyn, anything else that you guys want to touch base on anything? I know we went over a lot today. Uh, anything you guys want to touch base before we end it? I'd just like to say thank you for working with us. And um, I know we came to you with a different kind of use for the platform, but 
um, Jason and everybody has just been so great with working with us and helping us figure it out and finding that success and troubleshooting and letting us play around. And um, you don't always get that from a company. It's usually a lot of times it's very cut and dry. And so you guys have been so great about, you know, taking our feedback and letting us be part of focus groups and um, just growing with us as we're going through this whole thing together. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Carolyn. I guess I'll wrap up on, on my RN here and just say, you know, just the efficacy of the platform and the, the support that you all provide to us um, when we're trying to put together events. And also, you know, I think that you, you got it when, you know, when you said that now with the, with the versions coming out, you'll be able to have emails that are go out automatically because with my event, I had to have someone to send emails out 24 hours before, 30 minutes before, I actually had to have someone in place to do that. So to be able to give that feedback and to really feel like you're being heard, like you, you're not just, okay, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, that's nice. But no, really taking that feedback and doing something with it, it really feels like a collaborative partnership and that is um, worth its grain of salt. So thank you so much. All right, well, thank you, Sharon. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Tim. We really appreciate uh, all of you uh, stepping up and you know taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to be able to help. And it's not just Premier Virtual, but you're really helping everybody else that was on this webinar today because some of them have not jumped to the virtual world. Some of them don't really understand the virtual world as much, um, but you can go out and knowing that you're helping somebody. And that's why we do these webinars you know, on a monthly basis and, and, and really try to focus on an or, a type of an organization so that we can have experts that have done this to be able to help the people that haven't done that yet. So uh, panelists, if you guys wanna jump off, uh, you're welcome to jump off now. Uh, everybody else, I'm gonna turn this in. I'm gonna do a quick little 10 minute demo on the platform so that you can see exactly how our platform works. And then if you have more questions, please put them in there. Again, my panelists, Carolyn, Tim, Dana, uh, and, and, and Aaron, we thank you, we appreciate it. And Dana, you're not a small fish. Right, you're there. I know you like to say that, but every fish is the same size. So we appreciate it. Thanks everybody. All right, so for everybody else, uh, I'm gonna just put a quick little uh, demo out here for you, or I'm gonna put a poll out so that you can answer. Um, how do I answer the second? So uh, this is this this poll that's going to come out for everybody that's staying on right now. This is just if you've hosted events before, uh, you know, just to kind of uh, answer because we know that we're not the only platform out there. Um, so if you've used other platforms that are out there, you know, just kind of answer these questions, um, and then you can uh, we can go into it. So I'm going to launch that as I turn right in, and we are going to start a demo. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Jamie, good? Okay. So this is a, a registration page. So a registration page is a lot that can be put in there uh, for you as a, a host of the event. You can do different types of things. So, you know, this little graphic right here, it says sponsors welcome. You can put all different types of uh, either gifts or logos or anything that you want in there. This is a graphic so that when these candidates register, they see it here. Um, you can have training videos. Now, this registration page is for uh, your schools or your companies. So when you're putting it on here, you can put training videos. You can put different types of um, videos in here, commercials. We've had uh, messages from mayors in here uh, and governors that they put that in there. And this little box right down here where it says click here for a recorded demo, you can have links, you can have logos, you can embed videos in here. You can really customize this as much as you want to be able to, um, to customize it. And then when you create it, they're going to log in. And then once they log in from here, they're going to be able to see their dashboard. 
So once this company goes, sees their dashboard, we have FAQ and training. This just shows all of the training videos. So even if somebody doesn't do attend one of the trainings, they can still watch it here. Now, what we do here at Premier Virtual is we know, again, you don't do this on a daily basis. So we will have a training. This is when you meet your dedicated account manager and we have a training set up for you. So you as the host, you're going to understand all the training. Then we're also going to do trainings for your schools. So, uh, you know, Dana talked about she had 80 schools in her school district. So we set up three different days that we had webinars and then we had the principals logged in so they could they could understand it and we trained them on how to set everything up. But sometimes things change and they can't have it. But all the training, all the best practices are right in here as well. Uh, they create their profile from here. They just put their information in here. This is where they create their custom links. Um, and this is when those candidates research. You heard Carolyn talk about having uh, candidates where they are going out and they're, um, they were putting the links in there to be able to research. They had all that. Um, they put all that information in there. Um, then in turn, they can come in here. They can uh, add all their social media links. Now, I know I'm going very fast today, and this is just to be cognizant of your time to kind of show you the platform and how it works. And then afterwards, if you want a full demo uh, with one of my team to kind of really sit there and answer those one-on-one -on -one questions, we will go over that as well. Uh, we can schedule that directly with you. Um, and then they can edit their booth. So when they edit their booth, this is where they can really choose what they want their booth to look like. So if they had their logo, their logo goes here in the white spot. And then each booth looks a little different where... Uh, everything is set up, um, but you have different types of uh, booths that can come in here. You know, this was one that they asked us to put that looked more like a teacher, uh, you know, look just with the books in the back and stuff like that. Um, so again, you can really choose what you want your booth to look like as well. So that's all, that's all right in there. And then once they click on their booth and, and oops, Um, then after they create their booths, they can set up their recruiters. You can have as many recruiters as you want in here. And at a job fair, what does everybody say when a candidate walks up to the table? They ask the same questions over and over and over again. Uh, so what you can do is you can type your answer so you don't have to answer those questions. These are predefined messages. So you can type those messages in there so you can send those directly to the candidates and then they don't have to, you don't have to type every single time. You can have as many recruiters as you want that are in here. And then you can set up your job vacancies. So when you go to set up a job vacancy, this is where you're setting up the title, the city, the number of vacancies, your job description, is they put all of that in. Now, when you see here under targeted events, this is a lobby. So you can target where you want your job to go. Do you want your job to go in a specific location? You know, if it's, let's say, East Baton Rouge and, and they want it to be, um, well, how they broke it up is they broke it up in um, elementary, middle, high school. So then the schools that were in that um, location or in that um, uh, division, they would go in there. So if somebody was uh, certified just K through five, they would only go in the elementary and just see the schools that were associated with that. Once you set up your jobs, again, as many as you want, and, and we're a flat fee company. So there's no additional for resumes, jobs, candidates over a certain amount, boosts over a certain amount. It's a flat fee. So you can budget and know exactly uh, what you're looking for. Uh, and then on the day of the event, you have, you're going to log in and go into entering your booth. And from here, this is where you see all of the visitors. So if there was a visitor in the booth, you would see the visitors. You would see everybody that you're messaging with. So you can have your recruiters are gonna be able to see all of the messages that are coming in. So there's no long queues. You don't have to wait in a queue to be able to talk is that candidate can come in, send a message and that recruiter can see that. Um, and I'm gonna show you that from the candidate standpoint of view as well. And then all of the submitted resumes are right here as well. So when you're looking at uh, during the event, anybody who submitted their resume directly to you, you're gonna see that access. And then you have, here's the predefined messages. These are the messages that you can go instead of having to type uh, out there. And then the video, you heard Carolyn talk about video. So this is uh, internal video. You can hit that blue button and it then sends them a video link. So now they can do a one-on-one -on -one video interview. So that candidate can go from a researching your organization and school all the way to a video interview in a matter of seconds. And then uh, one of the most important things here is your reporting. 
and this is from a school level on the reporting, is you're going to know all of the submitted resumes, everybody who visited your booth, as well as all the chats. So you now can come in and you can download a resume. You can leave notes about a candidate. You can see that candidate behavior of what they looked at in the room. And then you have all the chat logs. So you have all of that information. You can export all of that data to you as well. So in any one of these tabs, it exports two things to you hard copies of all of the resumes in PDF format, as well as a spreadsheet that gives you all their contact information, as well as, as um, questions. So when you're setting up an event, you put in questions, you know, maybe where you're located, what your degree is in, what your certification is, they're gonna have that, um, all of that data as well right in there. So any questions on the company side? Jamie, did I have any questions I need to go over? Um, Katie had just asked something um, about the LA, but I could take that offline. No, I don't see anything. All right, sounds good. Now I'm going to show you what a candidate sees. Before I show you that, I want to show you another. So this is a registration page. So this was a chamber of commerce that used our platform. And if you see here, they had this graphic here, they had all of their uh, chambers that were in the event. They had commercials that they sold sponsorships to, and then they had their box here. So they had their sponsors right in here as well. So you can see it was a little bit different. So now if I just went to register for this event and due to time, I'm not going to, if I was a new register, it would take my name and email, and then it would put the questions that you had and you choose which questions you want to be able to have, to know what you want to be able to put in there. Um, and then when they go in and they go to log in, they're going to come into their, uh, their booth. So when they come into their booth and they come into the lobby here, um, this was, I had two different ones. So I'm in, I'm in two different lobbies. This is the lobby that a candidate sees. So this can be locations, industries, however you choose, and you can create that. Now, if I come back here to the lobby of the Broward virtual events, you can see this is set up differently. So they had their exhibitor hall, they had their career fair, and then they had their sponsorship booths. So when they go in, then they see all of the companies that are hiring in each one of these. So you can see there's no real uh, limit to how many companies that you can have within your booth. So if I come in here, back in here, we're gonna go into our demo one. If I click on location, I then come in and I look at uh, organizations that they have, and now I'm in a booth. So I'm in one of the virtual hiring rooms. So this is a room that's set up and you can see this is their organization bio. They can see what the company does. Am I interested? Yes. Then I can click over and I can see the job vacancies. From here, I can view the job vacancies and I can submit my resume. Now, if you remember when I talked about the um, resumes on the company side, as soon as I hit submit resume, you're able to see this. So you're able to see that that's real time that you know that Steve Edwards just submitted the resume to Gone Fishing. And now you have here, you can see this is a social media. So if they want to research social media, you have that. You heard Carolyn talk about the top banner. So this banner, they had webinars. Again, this is where those in the magnet program, this, the parents could come in and watch a quick little video or anything like that. Um, and then you had these three blue tabs. This is what on the, on the company side they were setting up. So they choose what they want to set up. It links to whatever they want and they can title it what they want. So when you look in right here, exactly what it is, it can take it directly to your website. So it really chooses on what you wanna be able to have. So again, candidate can see an org bio or a school bio all the way to the job vacancies to, um, to the chat. Now, Jamie just sent me a, a message, okay? So I'm gonna come in here. Sorry, I moved my, moved my camera here. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna turn off my camera for just one second. So I can come in here. I'm gonna say, hello. Jamie's gonna send me a video, okay? So when Jamie sends me that video, it is gonna come through and it's gonna come through on the bottom, okay? So uh, Jamie, it sends me a video. I say yes. Now you see here, uh, gone fishing and invited me to a video. So now I can accept that video. 
So now we're stepping right into a video call immediately. So you see Jamie here on the, the big side of the screen. I'm here in the small. It's all it is when you're, uh, you know, if you're a candidate, it's just, it's just vice versa, right? So you're on there. So thank you, Jamie. So then I leave right there. And, you know, we could go again directly into that video. So a matter of seconds or minutes, you can go, candidate can go in and start uh, talking directly to you. So they can go in and, and now here, I'm gonna leave this booth. I'm gonna go back to the lobby. I'm gonna go back into Nike. So I'm gonna go into a completely different booth that's in here. Now I'm gonna have in my chat, but oh, I saw that Jamie had sent me a message. I'm gonna send Jamie a message. The chat follows that candidates. No matter where they're at within that organization or within that event, they are now still able to see that chat. So they don't have to wait in long queues or anything like this, they can still have that conversation with them. So if you see that, it's, it's again, the chat is there so that these candidates can get there. Candidates don't wanna wait. They wanna be able to have that conversation and get this. Chats are also are not meant to be long drawn out conversations. Right. In, in any event, from a virtual event to an in-person event, you're connecting two people. And it's that first initial conversation to get them to that next level of the interview. And that's where you're trying to move these people through um, on the system side of that. So that's it from the candidate side and the company side. Uh, and then you as the host, um, you're able to come in here and you are now able to see all of the data. So from the data that they have, um, you're gonna see from every single one of the events that's out here. So when you come into an event, this event summary report, okay? So this is Fulton County Schools where students come first. So um, they see the event summary, uh, job seekers detail report, job posting and request the resumes. So what they're gonna be able to have in here is on this event summary shows by school. It's gonna show all of the information that is by school that um, they'll know how many chat messages they had, how many booths that were visited, how many resumes were submitted, how many jobs. So you'll know by school, everything happened. Job seekers detail report, you're gonna be able to see those candidates, what, you know, which schools that they looked at, which, who they submitted their resume to, you have all of that information. Um, and then the job posting report breaks down every single job that was listed at the event by school. And then you'll be able to see all of that, um, who applied to those positions. And then you have your request resumes. So you can now have hard copies of all of the resumes as well. Um, so you have all of that data that is in there. So does anybody have any questions? Yes, um, Keith Benton asks, can video chat happen simultaneously be between multiple recruiters and candidates? And can more than one recruiter, principal and assistant principal engage in a video chat with one candidate at the same time? So the first one is if you had 10 recruiters, they could each be on one-on-one -on -one videos. So they can do it simultaneously. Uh, all of our videos are one-on-one -on -one right now. Um, in the future, it'll it'll be moving where they can do more, but just for security reasons and stuff, we do a lot with the government. We kept everything one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, but again, we have some organizations that use Zoom uh, because they have to, um, or use Teams because they have to. So we allow them in that um, in those predefined messages that are in there. Um, they'll put their Teams link or their Zoom link in anything in there if they want to have like group interviews or anything like that, or if they have if their system has firewalls that they have to use a certain system, they can do that. All right. Any other questions? All right. So that looks like that is uh, that's all the questions for today. Again, my name is Steve Edwards, uh, CEO of Premier Virtual, and thank you for staying on and you know, kind of seeing what we do. If you like uh, to see more information and get more detail, or even talk with some of our clients that are using it uh, for other events, you know, just shoot us an email. Um, Jamie dropped his email uh, in the chat so that you can have that. You know, uh, Jamie can um, answer yep. all of those questions. So. If we host back-to-back -back job fairs, do we have to upload vacancies each time? No, you do not. So you can go in and you can have your job vacancies. 
And, you know, kind of where I showed you in that tab where you can make your jobs live, you can choose where you want your jobs to go. So all you have to do is if you have a hundred different job vacancies, they're going to be live in there. So you don't have to redo that, um, you know, any, any time. You know, and another thing on that on that back to back job fairs is, you know, we'll have organizations that are doing two and three day job fairs or they do a job fair on a monthly basis as well um, that there have there's no time limits between events on our platform. You don't have to wait 14 days uh, to do an event that's on here. If you want to do, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon and, and you know, run a different one seven days uh, straight, you can do that on our platform. All right. Again, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll be sending out a copy of this um, uh, webinar as well. So you'll have a link tomorrow. And we appreciate everybody's time. Have a great day. And thank you for participating.